Hello everyone and welcome to this lighting design for beginners tutorial. Uh, I'm going to kick straight into it so that you can get into your first design as fast as possible. Just a couple of disclaimers, uh, we're using the St Andrews College Theatre in Christchurch, New Zealand for all of our example show files. Uh, the other thing that I would recommend is using a mouse for this, otherwise a trackpad gets just a little bit fiddly. So the first thing we're going to do is open some software called LX Free. Uh, you can download this on both Mac and Windows, but I'm using a Mac. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is make a really big window. And the second thing is just to enable a function called Snap to Grid. Uh, this is just going to make your life easier. Alright, so we want to add a lighting bar to our lighting plot. That's uh, one of the first things we're going to do. So let's just do that there. And you can see I've selected this just by going to this button here. Uh, once we've... let's get rid of that. Uh, go back to our mouse and if we select this lighting bar, we can go to the information button over here. And we can name it. So let's call this lighting bar 1. I'm going to be... we can actually display the name uh, over here. And I'm just going to drag it off to the side so that we can do some work with lights on the bar. Alright, now that we've got our bar, let's add some lights to it, uh, just as an example. Uh, so if you click here and drag, then you've got this uh, light. We'll learn more how to change them later. If you drag it onto the bar, it'll stay on the bar and you can move it along. It won't slide off unless you try really hard. Um, so a couple of things that you can do to this light. Again, in the same info uh, section as before, you can see that under the light uh, section header, it's actually already automatically picked up that uh, this light is on lighting bar 1. Uh, and it's also automatically put a unit number there. Uh, this isn't very useful to us, so I normally disable them at the end, uh, but they always automatically appear. Uh, if we want to give this unit a color, so a gel that we want to put in front of the light, uh, we can type that in here and we'll automatically do it. I use a gel called the 103. Uh, quite a lot from uh, Chris James gels. Uh, so I've put that in there, and we can see it's automatically gone. This uh, the color of the one of the one hundred three. We can also change it to other colors, like a two hundred one, for example. Or if you were just searching for colors, you could just type in blue here, and you can see you've got all the different blues. Um, also, within this, we can uh, create a channel for this light. Uh, let's call this channel 1. And let's put a, uh, a use for it. So this is going to be our center spot. And we can display all this information on our document right here just by clicking on all the stuff that we've put in. I don't normally put the use uh, on this diagram, but I find the channel and the gel number to be very useful. Uh, so let's add a couple more fixtures. Let's just do a whole whole row of them. Uh, so one thing you'll notice is that you can actually move all of this uh, information. So you can move the gel number or the unit number. The unit number is a bit of a pain because you, sometimes you select it accidentally. But if you just select at the top of the light, then you should be fine. Uh, so let's put three on this bar. Now, uh, actually, a cheaper and easier way that you can do this is if we just delete this light, we can actually mirror this fixture, or you can mirror a whole group of them. So say if we wanted four, then you can just do that, and it will mirror about the center line. Uh, if you do want to see your center line, um, you can just go here. I find that using the help tool is very useful. Uh, it's a lot easier than navigating through menus. Uh, so now that we've got our center line there and our four lights, and we know how to change all the information on them, um, let's get cracking with a proper design. Uh, so this is a template file for the St Andrews College Theatre, as previously mentioned. Uh, which is more what a, a proper blank show file will look like before you start. Uh, as you can see on the left hand side here we've got all of our bar names 
And I've also put how many way lines each bar has. We'll go into a bit, a bit more depth about way lines later. Uh, and then we can see the actual bars themselves. If we select them, uh, we can and go to the information, we can see that these are named appropriately. For example, the centre uh, vertical bar here is called connector. Um, that's really all the information that you need about bars. This is the front of our stage here. So you can just do this kind of thing with a, a straight line. And then if you go into the square and circle, uh, then you can change the line style and also the line thickness. Uh, so adding lights to a, a, a big uh, rig like this, uh, we've actually got a key down here which is very useful. Uh, if you want to enable the key or update the key, then again just type in key and you've got your key block here. Also, uh, you'll see on the left hand side that there is a title block. Uh, we can do that as well, add and update the title block. Um, and to edit the information here, you just click. You can also do that in the document file here, uh, but I find it easier just to click. You can also edit all of the names of our lights, for example, uh, but these are correct as they are. You can also put rigging notes, just normal text boxes, uh, and this is a, a follow spot unit here, so not all your units have to be attached to bars. Uh, over here I've just put a little cheat, uh, cheat sheet, if you will, of lights that we can use. So you can copy and paste from here and drag them onto the bar. It will automatically give it a unit number. So we wanted a couple more of those. Just to do our front cover, we'll put one central. And then we can mirror this left and right, like before. Apparently it doesn't like, like this one, but normally you should be able to mirror that left and right. Um, so before we go into what all of these lights mean, uh, I've got a handy little Word document that should be able to explain that. Um, so all of this information, the, the lighting plots that we're working with, uh, this Word document, uh, how to download the software, will all be in the video description. Uh, so this uh, document here, so the first uh, and the most basic, or the most... Um, the staple unit really in lighting design are our Fennels. Uh, St Andrews College owns uh, a couple of variants of these. Uh, we've got our Fresnel uh, 1200 watt and our 650 watt. These are very typically used for front cover, in fact that's pretty much the only use that we use them for. Uh, but occasionally you can see them as backlight or top light as well as psych light. Uh, we use uh, the 1.2Ks as well as the 650s, uh, but the 1.2Ks we use just to light the downstage area and the 650s to light the upstage area. Uh, in terms of using them, you, uh, it's a variable beam, so there's a, no a focus knob that you can use to adjust uh, where the lamp base is, and that will uh, define how much light is spilt uh, over the stage. Uh, the other thing that you've got to your disposal is a barn door, so you can actually shutter off some of this light. Both the 650s and the 1.2Ks have this feature. Uh, definitely the most useful light in all of uh, theatre, I find, is our ellipsoidal uh, lights. We use these for specials, so any time that you see a centre spot, or a gobo especially, uh, that will be a ellipsoidal light. Um, and they're also very good just in just about everywhere. You can put them on the floor as top light, back light, side light, front light, anything that you think of, an ellipsoidal can probably do it. Uh, and we've got a couple of these. Um, St Andrews owns the Pacific 2350, uh, which the 2350 uh, just means that the beam can vary from 23 degrees to 50 degrees. Uh, and there's also a couple more variants of these that we hire. And we've also got another fixture called the Axial. Uh, they all operate very much the same. Uh, they've got shutters, uh, so you can uh, 
inside the light you can shut it off uh, how much light so you can make a square fixture. You've also got two focus knobs and this allows you to make a very hard beam uh, so you can get those that spot effect or you can make it uh, a soft uh, effect and you can use that for uh, just general uh, front cover or side light or anything that you want. The other really cool feature about these is that you can put gobos in them. Uh, and this is, I'll try to bring up a... There you go, so gobos uh, look something like this. Uh, and you can pass light through them uh, and they'll create a pattern on stage. Uh, as you can see like that. So they're very useful. Um, yep, so you can chuck gobos in them. Um, all of these lights can be gelled, by the way. You can chuck gels on just about everything. Uh, moving down the chain, we've got our wash lights. Uh, we use Parkan 64s, which are really old and really simple. Uh, so you can't focus them at all, apart from rotating the lamp base. Um, if you rotate the lamp base, uh, so the light is just a little bit taller than it is wide, or wider than it is tall, depending on how you look at it. Um, these are very, very useful for adding color to your stage, or using for side light or backlight. Uh, you can also put them on the floor, or point them at the audience. They're very good as uh, strobes, or just generally trying to blind the audience. Uh, they are 1000 watt. Uh, so it's very powerful. Um, the other unit that we use are LEDs. Uh, they do the same thing except they've got every single color that you want. Uh, so they're very handy units to have. Moving down we've got our floodlights. Uh, the psych lights that we have are four cell units which means that you can chuck uh, four different types of uh, gel on the on the fixture and control all of those channels individually. Uh, it's a very, very wide beam, uh, so basically anything that you point it at, it's going to be lit uh, 180 degrees almost, uh, so be aware of that. Uh, it can be used for psych or on the floor pointing at the audience, just generally if you want to give the stage a massive powerful hit of light, uh, they're very good. Uh, the other thing that we've got is our house lights. Uh, they do the same thing, they're just less powerful, and we only use them as house lights. Uh, I haven't used them as anything else, but if you do want to use them uh, some someplace different, of course there's nothing wrong with that. Moving on to our intelligent lights and our effects, uh, we've got, uh, we hire the these lights here, the Martin Max series. The Mac 250 is a moving profile, so it is basically a ellipsoidal light, except that you can uh, point it anywhere you want and uh, control it from your lighting desk. The other fixture is a Martin Mac 101, which is basically the same as our LED Parkan, except again you can move it and control it from your desk. Uh, very useful fixtures to have, uh, but they can be uh, very time consuming uh, in the plotting. Uh, sorry, going backwards a little bit here, we've got our smoke and haze effects. Uh, we most typically use the ZR12 smoke machine, uh, which is a very good uh, smoke machine for putting smoke on stage. Uh, smoke uh, can be used uh, for dances or productions. Uh, if you just need a burst of, of smoke, um, I'm sure you've all seen them. Hazes are a little bit more tricky to understand. Uh, they're basically a smoke machine, except uh, there's uh, it's it's a general so it's a slow smoke machine. So it fills the the room with uh, called a haze, uh, and that allows your light beams to be picked up a bit more easily. But you wouldn't use this as a direct effect. Uh, this would be more of a long-lasting effect over your entire production or show. Alright, so now that we know what all of those fixtures do, let's get back to our template. Um, so I'm just going to switch briefly to our basic setup for the theatre, so I can show you what all of our lights are doing. As you can see, we've got exactly the same as the template, just uh, with some lights on it. Uh, so as you can see, we've got our finales, uh, 
you can look at these on the key, but that's our Fennel here. Uh, we're using that as our front light at the moment, and we've got five, row, five um, lights on one bar. You normally do front light, or, or most lights actually, in odd numbers, because that way you can have a center light uh, if something does happen in the center of the stage. We've got three rows of it, so we've got our 1200 watt fixtures uh, on the first two rows, and then on the third row we've got our 650 fixtures. Um, and this is just more of an upstage, downstage thing. Uh, it's just how we do things. Um, also, the front light coming in from this bar is our Pacifics. Uh, on this basic setup, I haven't actually uh, uh, dedicated uh, to the Pacifics pur purpose, but they've got a, a 201 gel in them. I should probably go talk about gels for a second. Um, so gels you can put in front of every single light. Uh, there's very subtle effects and also very strong colours. So this one here is a uh, 103 gel from Chris James. Um, and it's a, a warm straw kind of feel. Um, you can see when it's when you select it what, what it's meant to do. Um, also we've got our 201 which is basically a colour correcting um, gel. So this takes the light from the lamps, which is 3200 Kelvin, and turns it into 5700 Kelvin, which is pretty much daylight. You can get uh, different strengths of the 201. Uh, you can have two, 202, which is the half. You can have 281, which is the three quarters. And you can have 201, which is the full. And I think there's a double full as well, but I can't remember the number. Um, I would, uh, you can use anything for f for your warm cover, uh, but I use the 103. Uh, as long as it looks good, I've used 340. I've gone open white before. Um, the 340, uh, this program doesn't have, uh, but it's still a very good uh, gel. Uh, so let's put that one back in there as a 201. Uh, so the Pacifics, uh, back to the back to them now, they are ellipsoidal lights. Uh, they're the 2350 uh, variant. Uh, they're about a thousand watts, so they're very bright. Uh, in this configuration here, they could be used as spots, or you could chuck gobos in them, uh, or you could just use them as a cool cover. Uh, so you can see that they're very versatile. Uh, also, in a couple of designs, you'll see uh, Pacifics. Let me just grab one. You can use Pacifics as side light. I forgot you to show you how to rotate lights, um, but you can just do that uh, from the light menu here. Or you can go into the square and circle, uh, the shapes menu, and you can rotate it with a bit more pre precision. So quite often you'll see uh, the Pacifics uh, you, or used as backlight uh, or side light, like so. Sorry, uh, more, more specifically side light. Um, they're very versatile. Uh, we've got Parkans on the side here, just Parkan 64s in the red, green and blue, just to give us some uh, colour on the stage. Also you can see these white lights here, we've got uh, LEDs, uh, so they're providing uh, side backlight. Uh, to the stage, and we've also got some uh, pure backlight here. You can see these are our four cell cyclorama or psych units. Um, they're at the moment four of them are being used. At, well, sorry, not four. Uh, one of them has been used as. T I'm missing my numbers here. Two of them have been used as top lights. So that's this one here, and this one. Uh, so that's just providing general top light backlight over the entire stage. Uh, so that's a very, very f uh, wide flood. Um, I actually haven't used them in this configuration. This is just a bit of a, a, a trial, um, but I'm hoping they'll do well. Also, we've got, got four pointed at the back wall, or the psych, uh, just to light that up. So that's really all there is to this design. Uh, it's just a combination when you're doing a design of front light, back light, side light, top light if you want it, and floor lights if you want it, um, and then just putting in a couple of effects if you have them. So that's moving lights, smoke, haze, dry ice uh, if you want to.
Um, let's see what else we've got here. We've also got way lines. Um, I promised I'd talk about them earlier. Um, so in our theatre we have uh, way lines which route uh, to different places. It's basically just a really long, permanently installed extension cord. Um, so you can uh, use way lines uh, to get your light's power. Um, each bar has a certain amount of way lines and they're located in a certain way. Uh, so this bar here uh, has 22 way lines. Um, so we can put 22 channels or lights on it. Uh, if we're using LEDs, then they can all be powered off one way line, or at least 10 of them can. Uh, and then we can use DMX to control them. So they're very useful in the fact that they don't take up many way lines. Uh, so if you look at this wayline map, you'll see that all of the black waylines route to route to our front of house. All of the grey waylines, uh, they also route route front, but they're the rear versions. So our proscenium arch or our our gap in the theatre between the front and the rear is located at bar four. Uh, the red uh, waylines route to the back, so they route over here. Uh, and the blue ones are our floor waylines. Uh, so that's just a quick rundown on waylines. That is about all I have to show you for, in terms of doing a lighting design. Um, I really wish you all the best. Uh, you can use, just remember, to use that front light, back light, side light. It's all about getting that perfect balance uh, and using colours creatively. Uh, we really want original thoughts. So if you want, you can use uh, this file here as a base uh, design. Uh, I'll include it in the video description on Dropbox. Um, but if you can, try and start off with just this template file, um, where it will be allowed for a lot more creativity, and you'll also understand a lot more how the software works. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you have that perfect balance of all of your lights. Uh, make sure it's really creative. Uh, that's that's kind of the name of this art. Um, I really wish you all the best. If you have any questions, chuck them in the comments. Or if you know me, then uh, PM me. Um, have a good day, guys.